Yeah, well, yeah, my name is Terry Lee Barrett. I was born in Kingston, Jamaica. I was raised right here in good old Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And I am an award-winning disc jockey, radio personality, and journalist. And I am adding a novelist and screenwriting to my many accomplishments. Thank you very much. Well, yeah, I, I've always wanted to be in the entertainment business, even though my parents wanted me, a, me to be a doctor or a lawyer. But uh, one day I was sledding down the street in Germantown, Pennsylvania, down Bainton Street uh, towards uh, Germantown Avenue, and a green metallic Jaguar pulled up the wrong way, and I was almost hit by the car, and the car stopped. The guy got out and said, hey, kid, how you, how you doing? Are you all right? And it was Chubby Checker. And I saw Chubby Checker, and I had just seen him in a movie, uh, at the Bandbox Theater down in Germantown and, and Chu, I think it was, uh, about a week before. And from that day on, I wanted to be in the entertainment business. So uh, when, I, 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 when I went to Temple University, they had a great communications department, which I majored in. And when I had the opportunity um, to be in radio, I went to WHAT, WHAT Radio here in Philly. And I tried out, and they gave me a job as a talk show host. And I think I was in my 20s, um, and uh, early 20s. And it was called Express Yourself to Terry Lee Barrett. I'm like, yeah. So that's how I got started in 1979, I believe it was. And then I did a show called The Infinite Hourglass. It was like a commercial series I did for First Pennsylvania Bank. I did like a ton of commercials. Uh, these are real professional commercials, and they ran on WDAS and WHAT and other radio stations here in Philly. And this is 1979 again. And um, they were well received. They were nominated for a national award. And I met uh, big entertainers, uh, Ray Charles and uh, James Brown, and to do these these little sh snippets on on the radio. And uh, from there, I went to WDAS radio from 1980 to 87 where I did news and sports, and I, uh, Georgie Woods took me under his wing. Yeah, the great guy, Georgie Woods, the guy with the goods. Um, one of the greatest radio personalities in the history of American radio. Uh, wanted me to produce his show. He asked me to produce his show because he thought I looked like him or something when, I, when he was a kid. I'm like, okay, George, <laughs> I'll do it. So um, I did his show for years, and then in 87, um, a funny thing happened. I uh, I got a call from a friend of mine um, named Java Emmanuel I, a Rastaman, who had a show on WRTI, a morning show, big reggae show. I mean, the biggest reggae show on the air, uh, WRTI FM, Temple's University Station. And he said, hey, Terry, we, I need you to come and take over the show. I'm like, uh, really? I'm like, he, he said, yeah, um, I have to leave. I said, where you gotta go? He said, I gotta go back to Jamaica. I said, well, why do you want me to do it? I, you know, I had three, re I had three reggae records. I had, I had a third world record and two Bob Marley records. And he said, because if you don't do it, they're gonna take the show off the air because your father is Dr. Leonard Barrett, the man who wrote the Rastafarian and also a professor at Temple. I said, okay. So I went there with my three records and I, I played them a lot <laughs> back to back. No, I'm just kidding. No, I got some records from a bunch of people and, and the show became a big hit. And it was such a hit that there are developers uh, in Old City, uh, two major Philadelphia developers that had a pier on Delaware Avenue. And, and this is in 1990, they asked me to come down there and uh, asked me, hey man, we love your show. Uh, we want to build a club here, a, a Caribbean themed club. Uh, what do you think? And I said, well, tell me more. He said, well, we want you to work here and DJ and do the music. And we're gonna call it Katmandu. We're gonna put the you know the palm trees up and everything. And they said, well, what do you think? I said, well, would you hurry up and build it? Would you hurry, hurry, hurry up and get it done? Katmandu was born, a legendary restaurant and nightclub, and it was so. I mean, lines around the corner, down the block, and that's in the '90s when um, Delaware Avenue became huge. It was like being in Las. It was like a Las Vegas Strip. There were like ten clubs on Delaware Avenue in the '90s, throughout the '90s. And nobody, you know, people do remember these, and it was a lot of fun. So it was so successful, they built another uh, Katmandu in Trenton on the waterfront, and that was successful too. 
So, but during all the this, these years, I produced a lot of reggae shows and um, all kinds of shows. And uh, I, I even had my own little video show I had on the cable station um, called uh, uh, Video Hawk. And I interviewed Janet Jackson, and I interviewed Third World, and, and so I was, you know, I was always interested in doing video and, and, and movies and TV too, if it was possible. And when I was a kid, my father used to tell me, um, my, you know, my father was born in Black River, Jamaica. Uh, he wrote the first book on the Rastafarians, which came out in 73. It was called The Rastafarians. And this is when Bob Marley just got big. So the book sold very well. It's the biggest selling book on Rastafarianism, and, he, and it's still selling. Um, my father passed away in, in 03 to 2003, but he was a, a incredible um, uh, professor. He got his doctorate at Temple. And he wrote the Rastafarians as his dissertation, and it came out as a book. So, uh, but when I was a kid, my father used to tell me stories about, I was born in Jamaica too, but um, I was raised here, obviously. But my father used to tell me ghost stories and history about Jamaica. And the go I think I was too young, because these, these, <laughs> these stories, for example, the rolling calf, the rolling calf is like a, it's not a calf, it's actually a bull, a ghost of a bull that comes out at night to, to scare you. And he used to imitate the chains of the. You see, you hear the chains before you see the bull. It was just too scary. I, mean, I, I had a problem. I couldn't sleep for a week. So, but he told me these stories, and he also told me about the Maroons of Jamaica, that fought the British, and the British couldn't defeat them, and the British had to sign a treaty with these uh, brothers and sisters that lived up in the mountains with the, the Taino Indians. He told me all this fantastic history about Jamaica. And when I was a kid, I went to see Ben Hur and the Vikings and all those big movies. I said, well, these, these maroons sound like the, like Jamaican Vikings. They sound like black Vikings. I'm like, oh, so, so when I, since I was a kid, I wanted to write this book called Cots on the Iron Thorn, which is called Now. And uh, it's a fantasy uh, set in Jamaica with a big Philadelphia tie-in. So Kata is a superhero character, um, and the Iron Thorn is his magic sword. So I started to... Uh, get into uh, writing, and the book came out last June, and it's just doing really well. It's become uh, like the book of the month on uh, uh, bookbaby.com, it's on amazon.com, etc. But it's an adventure story, and uh, it has a big Philadelphia tie in. And the Philadelphia tie in is William Penn. Now, we live in Pennsylvania. And um, William Penn founded Pennsylvania in the 1600s. But William Penn is actually William Penn Jr. Many people don't know uh, who William Penn Sr. is, and that's his father. And William Penn Sr., Sir Admiral William Penn, a knighted admiral, Sir Admiral William Penn Sr., took Jamaica from Spain in 1655 with 8,000 men and kicked the Spanish out of Jamaica because Spain was there because Columbus sailed in 1492, and they were there ever since. So um, England wanted to get involved with the New World in, in the Caribbean, and so in 1655, William Penn's father takes Jamaica from Spain. Now, William Penn Jr., who nobody refers to him as Jr. here in Philadelphia because they don't know who William Penn Sr. is, and I actually told this to one of the mayors who didn't know who William Penn Sr. was. I'm not going to mention his name. Michael Nutter. But the point is this. <laughs> the point is this. It's a joke. Me and Michael go back, way back, so it's okay. But he didn't know who William Penn Sr. was. And a lot of people don't know. You ask anybody in the, you know, around Philly, they don't know who William Penn Sr. is. And William Penn, Sir Admiral William Penn Sr. is the reason why William Penn Jr. is here. Now, William Penn Sr. takes Jamaica from Spain in 1655, a Protestant. And um, his son wants to be a Quaker, becomes a Quaker, which is a pacifist. Uh, sect in, in in England, which was against the law. It was a, against the law to be a Quaker and to be a pacifist and to talk about peace and love on the corner and we're all black. That was against the law. And um, his father was uh, disapproved of this. So he kicked William Penn Jr. out of the house. And William Penn Jr. spent a lot of time in prison in the Tower of London in England. And uh, But when his father was dying, he asked King Charles II to take care of his son and King Charles gave him Pennsylvania, the whole state. Gave William Penn Jr. Pennsylvania, the whole state, because he owed his father money uh, for, for, for taking Jamaica from Spain. 
So there's a big tie-in between Jamaica and Philadelphia, and it's in the story, the Cots of the Iron Thorn story. So it has some history, and it's based in fact. It's fantasy based in fact, and but it has some humor and um, and some pirates and all that stuff, and, and it's really a romantic fantasy at its heart. It's, uh, it has some love stories between um, a number of generations of, of people, and uh, people like it, man, it's, and I'm really happy about it. Well, again, you know, what, you know, I, I think like like many of us, we went to the movies and we saw fantasy movies, a lot of them, um, and there are a lot of them. I mean, so, I mean, from the Wizard of Oz on up, and so it was like right there. We we can watch a fantasy, and so I've you know I knew what a fantasy was and how to write one, and then um, you know a story is your story. I mean, everybody everybody tells stories about themselves every day when you wake up. People ask you, what are you doing? What did you do last night? And you tell a story. So, um, But when you tell your own story, it's a little, I think, it's been a little um, more interesting, a little maybe a little easier because you know the facts of your own story. You're not making it all up. And my father was a fascinating person. My life has been fascinating. So, um, so it's semi-autobiographical. So that's how I approached it. And again, since I was a kid, I wanted to write the story about these warriors in Jamaica, these real warriors. And... Um, and then the, the, my father wrote the book about witchcraft called The Sun and the Drum, which Kata is based off of, not the Rastafarians, but he wrote a book called The Sun and the Drum, which is about witchcraft, or Obia, O-B-E-A-H, in Jamaica. And that really fascinated me. And I, so I, I mixed it all up because people, people like, you know, just like Wizard of Oz, they like, they like those fantasies. And you have to have a witch, you know, a good witch, and Grace Jones hopefully will be the witch. <laughs> So um, maybe Idris Elba will be Kata, the Iron Thorn. You know, Idris is, is just great, and, he, uh, and hopefully he'll, he'll agree to do it. I'm talking to some of his people right now. But anyway, the approach is um, semi-autobiographical story about things I already know, I've already been through, I've already seen, and then the fact that I've seen some great, we've all seen great fantasy movies through, throughout our lives, and so you can apply what you've seen and what you know and, uh, and write a fantasy, yeah.